Nobody like you. you are. Nobody like the great physician. Nobody like you are. Nobody like the great physician. Nobody like you. 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 Life to be forever. 
ever change. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, those that are in the sanctuary, hallelujah, allow us, hallelujah, to tap in, hallelujah, so that your word can go forth uninterrupted, unhindered, hallelujah. And to those who are watching the stream, hallelujah, oh God, bless them, hallelujah, that they too will receive a touch from you, hallelujah. Those that are sick and couldn't come in, hallelujah. Those that stumble across the stream, hallelujah, we ask you, Lord, to send your mighty blessing upon them, hallelujah. Oh God, change their lives, hallelujah. Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we ask you, Lord, to allow this atmosphere to be set, to be saturated for the woman of God, hallelujah, to deliver the word, hallelujah, without fail, hallelujah, without interruption, without her having to work too hard, hallelujah. Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we declare it all right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. For our scripture today, we're going to come from Exodus 16. Hallelujah. Dealing with verses 4, 5, 6, and a portion of 7. Hallelujah. Just want to send a reminder. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So once again, Exodus chapter 16, verses 4, 5, 6, and just a portion of 7. Amen. 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 Come on, don't lose that, that spirit of praise and worship. Hallelujah. No highs and lows today. Hallelujah. No highs and lows. Hallelujah. We're going to stay consistent. Hallelujah. With the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because he wants to move in this place today. No highs, no lows. Hallelujah. Stay consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Amen. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, And even then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's read that last part again together. That last part is seven. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And if I, uh, it was morning, but we still going to praise him like it is morning. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We bring greetings to you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the Women Truly Liberated Movement Annual Conference on today. Our theme is Beyond the Veil, dealing with healing and deliverance, and we bring greetings. Amen. Hallelujah. We welcome you to True Liberation Ministries, where our senior pastor is Apostle Clarence Huckleberry III, our first lady, Lady Felicia Huckleberry, and we welcome you on today. We are uh, so thankful that you decided to join us today. Those that are joining us virtually, God bless you. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord meet you right where you are. In Jesus' name. And we would love to for everybody to stay uh, connected to us to see all of the things that God is doing here at True Liberation. So please text the word TLM to 54244 to stay connected to see all of the things and the, uh, all of the great works that is happening right here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We came to lift the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. She said keep it on the high. Don't bring it down. So we're going to keep lifting up the name of the Lord on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I dare you just call on his name, just call him Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. Lift it up, say. The name of Jesus. 
they shall be saved. Your sons and daughters shall be saved in this place. If you believe it, lift that up in Your here. Sons and daughters shall be Come saved. on, say it if you believe it. They shall be. No matter what it looks like. Of an army arising, I hear the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arising in this way. If that's you, lift it up on today. I hear the sound yeah. of an army arising. I hear the sound. Release your sound and hear what this afternoon. Come on and open up your mouth and release. 
worship. Come for your glory. Bring pleasure in it. Come for your glory. Receive our praise. Come for your glory. Bring pleasure in it. Come for your glory. 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 It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Come for your glory. Come for your glory. If you still need the glory, if you still need the glory in any area of your life, come on and lift your hands right now. Push into his presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, let it arise, let that sound arise. Let it arise, let it arise. There's some chains that you need to break. It's not going to break until you open up your mouth and release the sound. There's some family members that's not coming back home for the house of time. That sound. There's some situations that's not going to change until you open up your mouth and release that sound. Now we ask for the glory. Now don't waste the glory. Now that we're in the glory, now that we're in this moment of glory, open up your mouth and get what you need from the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. The glory is here. The glory is here. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence, God. We don't take it for granted. We don't take your presence for granted, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. of the song was to release the sound that invites the glory. There is a sound hallelujah that heaven is waiting to hear from you that authorizes what God is waiting to release in the earth. Jesus said it like this let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means heaven's already waiting on the earth to prepare for what's ready to be released and it's released by your sound. One more time, open up your mouth and give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to move into our offering time, but the presence of the Lord is here right now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time. See, I thought that, oh, wait a minute. I thought that would get a different response because we all know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So I'm going to say it again. It's offering time. Scripture said that he gives seed to the sower. He gives seed to the sower. And if the seed stays in your hand and doesn't go into the ground, it cannot produce unless it goes into the ground. Or somebody said, well, I'll only sow into good ground. Well, guess what? If you sow in your good ground, if you are good ground, then the seed will produce. But the Bible says that he sowed in the year of famine and produced a hundredfold. How did that happen? 
it wasn't that the ground was good ground. He had good seed and he was good ground. He carried the anointing of good ground with him. How you? How do you do that? By becoming a, a sower. So I want you to prepare to give this morning. Prepare your offerings. There are several ways that you can give. If you're in the house, you can give, of course, by the money that folds, the money that jingles. Um, you can also give by Cash App. You can give by Givelify or you can give by Zelle. We also have in the back, pa uh, so it's Pastor Huckleberry has the credit card machine if you want to give by credit or debit as well. We have that capability now. This is the Women Truly Liberated Movement Service. And so y'all better make some noise for that. <laughs> Anybody feeling truly liberated from this weekend? Have some things released, let go of some things, post some stuff to go in. You can't come back. Amen. So that being said, sisters, I believe you have an assessment that you've been given of $25. So if you have not given that already, please be prepared to give that as well. And if you have uh, have not already given your tithe, this is a, a church that believes in tithing. Amen. If you have not already given your tithe, prepare that as well. And whatever the Lord has put on your heart that you can give cheerfully, be prepared to do that now. Amen. So whatever you have, go ahead and stand to your feet. If you need an envelope, I believe the ushers have already been through. But if you if you still need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hand and the ushers will make sure that you get an envelope. As you're standing to your feet, we're going to prepare to say our faith declaration. Come on, stand to your feet as we prepare to give. Stand to your feet with me. We want to do this on one accord and with unity, amen. So let's say our seed, lift your offering, and let's say our seed declaration. Money cometh. Increase is here. And favor has already been released. I declare that no lack will be amongst us. And my seed is already blessed. Amen. Father, we thank you for what we're about to sow into your kingdom right now. We thank you that it is good seed going into good ground and it shall produce the abundance that you have already put in. And you said that the seed of everything is in itself. So as we sow, we expect an expectation of return on what we have planted. In Jesus' name, amen. You are, I'll turn you over to the hands of the ushers. Uh, everyone on these outside aisles, turn. Everyone's turning to your left, amen. Turn to the uh, as they're coming, as they're coming to sow, let's prepare to receive our announcements as well.
obviously in person and we also have them live streamed amen sunday's christian education begins at 10 45 a.m worship service at 12 15 p.m tuesday we have prayer at seven o'clock p.m wednesday worship and word bible study also at seven o'clock p.m thursday we have praise team rehearsal at seven o'clock p.m and youth choir rehearsal will also convene on thursday at seven o'clock p.m amen I uh, want to, I know we have given already, but continue to be reminded that we are raising funds for our building funds. So if you forgot, you can still give that, amen, just indicate that those uh, funds are for uh, building fund. Today, we, um, has, has already been said, we are concluding our Women's Truly Liberated Movement Conference, amen. <laughs> Amen, amen, and we are so blessed and honored to have Apostle Denise Milvin Williams with us today, amen, and we're going to keep having a high time in the Lord, amen. Now, I will breeze through these announcements as quickly as possible so that we can get to the word, amen. This is week number 17 for reading through your Bible. If you're a little bit behind, see Senior Associate Pastor Huckleberry for tips on how to get caught up. Um, also, for our church cleanup, please refer to the chat for the schedule. Amen. Tomorrow, Monday, April 24th, is the youth dance and flag rehearsal from 6.30 to 8.30 uh, p.m. Next Sunday is April 30th, which is our youth Sunday. Amen. So our young people are taking over. Amen. On Sunday, April 30th. Amen. Um, Saturday, May 6th, we do have Sister Cara's event that will be held here at TLM. It's Healed for Real Luncheon. There are several particulars. Everyone, please check the chat for those. But some of the highlights we are going to, um, that will be here, 10 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, First Lady will be speaking. She'll be one of the speakers. So will Minister Brianna Majors and some of the others. Amen. And again, you can ch uh, check the church chat for all of those specific speakers. There will be praise dancing and vendors. Registration does end on um, Sunday. Uh, April 30th and if you're uh, needing some assistance with details and some um, attendance assistance please see Sister Cara amen um, Sunday May 7th is Harvest Sunday which is every first Sunday you can give offering you can also bring items for the house of the Lord if you're not sure which items please see any of the deacons and um, and then Sunday May 14th is Mother's Day amen <laughs> We'll celebrate all the mothers. Friday, May 19th, Apostle Huckleberry will be going to Greater Praise Fellowship at 7 o'clock p.m. Saturday, May 20th, is a leadership meeting right here at 10 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. Sunday, May 21st, Apostle Huckleberry will be going to Open Door for the Men's Ministry Service at 5 o'clock p.m. If you are, uh, if you are, those of you who are live streaming, um, if you are sick and shut in and wish to send prayer requests or for somebody that you know, that link or that email address will also be in the church chat. Um, and um, yes, those are your announcements for this week. Amen. <laughs> Um, for um, month, I'm sorry, for our Sundays in May, or we're also having our serving Sundays, amen, that Apostle Huckleberry had mentioned before, so we'll be serving Sundays, amen, so we, if you're needing some assistance with that uh, understanding, please let any of the, uh, let Pastor Huckleberry, I'm sorry, Apostle Huckleberry know, and then he can provide more clarity, so amen, amen. Bye. 
Loretta. I'm sorry. And she, she's been hanging out with us all weekend. She's been hanging. I was glad to see her this morning. Hallelujah. I think you go to, uh, what church you go home in? Faith Apostolic. Well, welcome, welcome. Then we have, um, I can't hardly see her again. We have a pastor. Who is this? There she is. I'm sorry. Can I Adrian Overton, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. And then we have um, Warren. Wait a minute, Warren Woods? Oh, that's Apostle Denise's husband. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Amen. And then uh, Jasmine, you know, we, we always like to read. We will definitely keep you in prayer. And um, you're looking for a church home? You know, hey, pray about it and ask God. He'll send you to the right place. Amen, amen. So I was going to have Sister Mary introduce Apostle Whitney, but I think I've known her long enough. I can do it without her. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I, would, I, know, I won't say a lot. But again, I just want to thank everybody for coming out this weekend. We had an awesome time in Lord, we had a prophetess Michelle Miller Friday night, and she ministered the word. We had uh, Minister Jackie Boozer, she ministered a strong word. I spoke, and then we had Michelle again, prophetess Michelle, and she wrecked the house. And but you know what? It was in a good way. She told us some things we need to hear because sometimes we don't want to hear the truth, but we all know the truth will set us free. You know, sometimes somebody got to tell you about yourself. So that's kind of what was going on yesterday. <laughs> so it ain't always nice and. And Rosie, sometimes it's the things that you need to hear. So we thank and praise God for that. So we don't, without further ado, I'm just going to do a brief introduction of Apostle William. She's been here before. This is like her third time. So you guys, you know, she's, she's like family now. We claim her as family. So um, we're all familiar with her. I met her back, oh, my years ago uh, when I went to uh, Christ Temple. And I, I just felt such a connection from her. She, she's so genuine. And she, we had women conferences, and we had women. We would go to a campsite, like outside of Marion, and we would stay Friday. We stay Saturday, and then we have a Sunday, and then we run to church, and then we had church with everybody else. And the Spirit of God, I learned so much from those, and so much about unity. Um, Mary and I, we shared a room, and I always wondered how did we end up at the top bunk, and the little, and the young people took the bottom. So our old self had to climb up these old rusty. Um, things and get on the very top but you know what we enjoyed each other and we set up and we talked and we communed and we had a beautiful relationship I would not trade that for the world so again uh, Apostle she has traveled extensively she's been to Africa uh, I think even South America she's been to many many places doing God's work building churches um, wells she, her, that's her mission her heart is to build wells in different communities in Africa She's just such an awesome woman of God. She's an author. She's a, an awesome author. Um, there's, so she has some great books, and I'll let you guys know how to get a hold of some of those. And um, without further ado, she's just like a mother to me, and I love her so much. Whenever I call, she always says, okay. And I, and I appreciate that because you don't have to do it, but I appreciate you for doing it. So without further ado, I'm going to let her come as she wants to come. Apostle Denise Williams. Sorry about that. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Evangelist Sharp, and it is an honor to be asked to come to minister the Word of God to such a great group of people. I'd like to honor Past Apostle Huckleby and First Lady Huckleby. And some, yes, right here. Yes, we're going to have a meal today. <laughs> appreciate the worship. Thank you for the invitation. It's just good to be here. I want to honor and recognize my husband. Um, we'll be married a year next month. <laughs> Elder Warren Williams, he's waving your hand, honey. <laughs> 
God is good, amen? And uh, I absolutely find no fault in him. And if you just hang with him long enough, you won't find any fault with him either. And I feel like singing, but I know we better get right to the word of God. So I'll let you, I'll just read the word, then you can sit down because it's uh, hard on the feet. I know I have a word for you from the Lord. Sometimes you wonder, but then other times you just know. And, and this thing has been brewing in me for a while. And uh, I've just been, I couldn't wait to get here. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. So we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we'll begin with, let's see, 8, verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the work, working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness, with unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Father, we love you so much, and we lean on you. I need you. I need the anointing that makes preaching easy. I need your glory to flood the hearts of everyone here and prick hearts of those who have strayed away or those that don't even know you. And uh, Lord God, your presence makes all the difference in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. We trust you. And we doubt you for nothing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Just before you take your seats, would you just lift your voice and praise the Lord? This time, I want you to do it because you know he's a good God. Because you know he's worthy. Because you know he deserves the glory. Because you know the word of God is true. Because his presence woke you up this morning. Hallelujah. And he started you on your way. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been for the Lord, we would have been consumed. The devil would have eaten us up. But God in your mercy, God in your grace, God in your love, and because your loving kindness is better than life, your lips shall praise me. God, I bless you. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Nobody like the Lord. There's nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. There is nobody. 
Hallelujah. Nobody, nowhere that's like the Lord. Hallelujah. He's the great I am. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. He's Jehovah Chira. He's Jehovah Shaka. He's Jehovah Sitkanu. He's the great I am. He's the lover of my soul. He's the deliverer. He's the way maker. He's the door opener. He's the door closer. Hallelujah. He's my protector. From danger seen and unseen. Hallelujah. Most of it you haven't even seen what God has done. How he sent his angels and said, Not today. Not this one. You can't have them. You can't touch them. Not today. And you don't even know it. But God has been good. He's in the room right now. They must. It only takes just a few seconds to tap into the glory. The glory cloud is hovering over us right now. It only takes a few seconds to tap in. Hallelujah. If you don't tap in, what's the point in coming? We came here to give him glory. I came here to bless him. I was at home and you said I was family. <laughs> this, is how, whoop, this is how I act with my family. And you know I'm pressing down because you guys are pushing me. <laughs> and, and, and listen, when we get together, I mean, we, we have to deal with so much out there that when we get together, it should be an event. <laughs> When I walk away from this place, I should be sweating and hot and your hair sticking all up. Why? Because we got a devil to deal with on the outside. But in this house, oh yes, we're going to give him glory. Oh yes, we're going to praise him. Oh yes, we're going to say you are a wonderful God. We're going to say I don't know anybody like you. There's nobody like you.
we sing songs and we say things, we say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And it almost became a cliche. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Oh. But all you gotta do is think. Just, just, just think a minute. Just, just think the other day. You don't have to go far. <laughs> just last week. Just, just a week ago. Some of you were sick in your body and here you are today. And, and, and it shouldn't take long to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Standing if you want to. Mm -hmm. I think I think Marvin Sapp said I never would have made it without you. I never would have made it. I would have been in the dumps and overridden with depression and sadness and grief and sorrow but he brought joy to my soul all right the title of this message is your choice you can either have God's truth or the devil's lie it's your choice found this little story and if you bear with me I'm going to share it with you and then we'll get right into the word <clears throat> one day a man named truth and a man named lie stood by the river just outside of the town they were twin brothers. Lie challenged truth to a race, claiming he could swim across the river faster than truth. Lie laid out the rules of the challenge, stating that they both must remove all of their clothes and, on the count of three, dive into the freezing cold water and swim to the other side and back. Lie counted. One, two, three. And truth jumped in. Lie did not. Lie and, and truth swam across the river Lie put on Truth's clothes and walked back into town dressed as Truth. He proudly paraded around the town pretending to be Truth. Truth made it back to shore, but his clothes were gone. He was left naked only uh, with only Lie's clothes on the ground to wear. He refused to dress himself as a lie. Truth walked back to the town naked. People stared and flared as naked truth walked through town. He tried to explain what happened and that he was in fact truth. But because he was naked and uncomfortable to look at, people mocked and shunned him refusing 
to believe that he was really true. The people in the town chose to believe the lie because he was dressed appropriately and easier to look at. From that day until this, people have come to believe a lie rather than believe the naked truth. In, that, in this day and age, we often either consciously or subconsciously reject certain truths in our personal lives or in the world around us for the sake of peace of mind. These truths may be in our personal lives, financial issues, relationship issues, struggles with our faith, addiction problems. They are all areas where we turn our back to the cold, hard truth, even if it's to our own peril. We see in our country on every front, people can pre be presented with unrefutable, yet un inconvenient truths regarding issues concerning terrorism, global warming, race relations, cultural differences, and countless other issues. If they shun those truths and decide instead to believe the well-dressed lie, especially if it benefits our agenda or our idealistic narratives. Well, the Bible has something to say about that. In John, chapter number 8, verse 32, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In John 1 and 17, it says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Truth brings freedom. The Bible says, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Knowing the tree, truth is knowing God at some level. All right. As I was looking in that story and other things that I began to study, I was starting to wonder how do we identify the truth and then how do we walk in it? And and identifying the truth, the the truth we have to come to the conclusion Jesus Christ is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All right, so that's already established. Now, what happens is, if we look at Second Thessalonians, there is a value that people put on things. And I began to see, God wants us to value the truth like we value other things. And so I started thinking, well, what makes something valuable? And what makes something valuable is the price other people are willing to pay. So then I started thinking, and I've got some sports people around me. So I started looking up athletes and how much they're worth. And uh, anybody know Conor McGregor? OK, he's a prize fighter. And his net worth is $180 million just for hitting somebody. <laughs> and then LeBron James, the NBA for who? The Lakers. Come on, you all know that. You don't, don't, act, don't, act, don't be acting like you don't know. <laughs> $153 million. And is it Dak Prescott? NBA, Dallas Cowboys? A hundred and sixty million dollars. And Stephen Curry, okay, that's your man, all right. <laughs> NBA, what is it, the Golden State Warriors? Oh, you knew. Seventy-four million dollars. He looks like a little kid. Then Naomi Osaka, tennis, fifty-one million dollars. Uh, Serena Williams, 
$54 million. Simone Biles, the gymnast, $10 million. And when I read that, I was like, Lord Jesus, what is going on? Now, stay with me. I'm not against, the, I'm not against these people, but I, I have a problem because they became that important because someone else valued their worth. So evidently, just shooting hoops for somebody, it was really, really important because now they're making millions. And it hasn't stopped. That's just where we are right now. And it makes me wonder, how do you value the truth? Do you value the truth enough to fight for it? Do you value the truth enough to wait for it? Do you value the truth enough to declare it? Do you value the truth enough to speak up for it? Do you value, listen, let me tell you what God began to show me. And I think he did this on purpose. The Lord, he is not funny. But I had this whole beautiful sermon on my tablet. You just tap it and it moves, and it died this morning on the way to church. I had the charger, and I plugged it in, and it won't charge. Everybody said, oh. <laughs> but I think he just wants me to flow. And, and what the Lord began to deal with me in Second Thessalonians, he said, this is the problem. He said, the people, if you will not love the truth, he didn't just say read the truth. He said, you rejected a love for the truth. He said, then I'm going to turn you over to a strong delusion. And when I looked up the word delusion, it, it almost gives you the idea of loony. Like a strong delusion is like, you're doing things that make zero sense. Yes, right. Right. And if you just take a look at what we've been dealing with, I would say in the past six months, yes. these people have been turned over to strong delusions. Yes. They're deluded into thinking it's okay to shoot somebody through the screen door of your house right. and be okay with it. Yes. Strong delusions. Yes. The problem is, God's people are falling into that same trap. They're falling for strong delusions. Why? Because you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over. The longer you hear something, the more you believe something. And you haven't turned it off or you haven't canceled it out with the word. So if I hear something over and over and over, I can't tell you. If you turn on CNN, NBC, C CBS, if you turn that on, you can turn on the morning. It will go nonstop till midnight or later. Yeah. And they're not bringing anything new. They're just saying the same thing over and over and over. But if you hear something long enough, you'll start believing it. And you'll say, no, 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 I would never believe that. If you hear it long enough, if you hear it loud enough, long enough, loud enough, if you don't believe it, you'll at least compromise with it. You'll say, no, I don't believe that. But you will compromise with it. Well, you know, well, you know, that's not that bad. And I do have a friend that's like that and I have a family that goes there and I have this and I have that but let me tell you what the spirit of the Lord is sending today is there shall be no compromising you cannot give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and expect that you're going to please the Lord it does not please the Lord I'm sorry I wanted to bring you something sweet and something uh, 
I wanted to give you something that would make you feel happy. But let me tell you, I have to tell you the truth. Where are the warriors that will stand up for truth? We have to have the truth. And it doesn't mean you have to go on national TV. You don't have to do all of that. All you got to do is stand when everybody else is bowing. All you got to do is say, not me and mine. I will not bow. And I will not compromise. I determined in my soul that I will live for the truth. I'm willing to die for the truth. The scripture says you will know the truth. Now, if you know the truth, if you know the truth, you don't have to know all of it. Some people think, let me see your Bible. You don't have a Bible. Let me see your Bible. You don't have one. Let me see your Bible. You don't have one. Let me see your Bible. You don't have one. Let me see. Anybody got a paper Bible? Lord have mercy. I don't care. That means you've been using it. I, I'm, I, I'm not into, you know, I'm just fooling with you. But here's the deal. You, you don't have to know everything in this Bible. You know, the Lord, he is God. It is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. That I know. I was lost and now I'm found. That's the truth. And that I know. I know I was in a dark place and the Lord reached his hand down in the muck and the mire and with tender hands he lifted me. Hallelujah. That is the truth. You hold that truth. You love on that truth. God, I thank Thank you for bringing me out of a horrible pit. Because they received not a love for the truth. They received it. Listen, it was like God said, here, I got some truth for you. Oh, no, you're not supposed to take it. Come on, work with me. <laughs> no, don't take it. No, don't reach for oh, okay. it. Okay, I'm sorry. We got to work on our, our little skit. But here's the Lord. Listen, he's doing this to everybody. Here's some truth. You're down in the dumps. Listen, I can lift you up. I can bring you peace. Come on, take the truth. Please take the truth. And they reject it. And he goes to someone else, I got, I got peace for you. I got peace that will flow like a river. And when everything else is chaotic and crazy, you will be at peace. Would you want some peace? You're supposed to say no. <laughs> but the Lord, he's coming to everybody. Isn't there anybody that wants his truth? Is there anybody that wants to try truth? Come on, lies have been following you all your life. You have been walking in lies. And you know how lies hurt? Don't you know how lies hurt? Lies hurt people. Lies destroy people. Lies tear people down. Lies cause people. Listen, if you haven't seen it, even on the internet, people are putting lies on the internet and causing other people to commit suicide. These lies are destroying lives. And the Bible says, if you at least have a love for the truth, I may drop the ball sometimes. I'm not perfect. I might not make it every second. But I know one thing. God, I fall short. But I know I love you. I know I love you. I know that beyond the shadow of a doubt. And I know you love me beyond the shadow of a doubt. I know you kept me beyond the shadow of a doubt. I could not keep myself. It was you that kept me. 
I hold on to that truth. And because I love the truth, the Lord will lift us up. But God said, those that receive not a love for the truth, he said, boom. I'll send a strong delusion. And you start believing stuff that is dumb. You start believing stuff that makes absolutely no sense. And now, truth is getting harder and harder to find. Because they're even changing our books. They're changing our history. How do you change history? That's a strong delusion. How do you change? It's already happened. But let me tell you, and I'm jumping into my teacher mode, if some of you parents don't get to the school board meetings, don't sit here and say, that's a terrible shame. And you never went to a school board meeting to say, I oppose this transaction. I reject that book. I want this out of my library. This cannot be in my child's classroom. I don't want them to have free access to the internet all day in school with no supervision. So you embrace the truth, but what about your children? They're feeding this junk to them day in and day out. Now kids are saying, am I a girl or am I a boy? What? That's a strong, listen, that's a strong delusion. Please know this. I may not ever get invited back here again, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give it to you while I got, I got the mic. <laughs> okay, Mary. So I'm trying, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this as plain as possible. And my teacher background, I can't help it. I just do visual aids. You know how that is. But a picture's worth a, what, a thousand words. Right? So here we have, ladies and gentlemen, two meals. This one is on a lovely piece of china. As you can see, it's very well laid out. Beautiful. This is just on a plain plate, but it too has colorful food. Your choice. Your choice. And, and what's your first question? Thank you. What's on the plate? It's like, who made it? Where, where, what's on it? Where did it come from? Are they clean? All of that. Well, this came out of my kitchen and some of Mary's kitchen. I'm a very clean person. So does that take one of your worries away? <laughs> but what I want to get across to you is, you eat stuff, hook, line, and sinker. You don't ask any of those questions. People serve you stuff, and you eat it. This right here, I wish you all could see it. You might, can you see it pretty good? OK, does it look lovely? You can see it. Yeah. Uh, now, that might take too long. All right, what Mary's passing around? Yeah, I see their eyes look like, whoa, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. All right, and I'm saying it came out of my home. The only thing is, it came out of the garbage. That came out of the garbage. But I dressed it up enough. Come on, 
I dressed it up enough to make you say, hmm. You, you, you didn't turn it away completely. Right. You said, let me take a look at that. Yep. Then you asked who made it. Oh, she made it. Oh. Yep. <clears throat> and that is exactly what the devil is doing right now. Yeah. He's serving you a bunch of garbage. Yep. And because you haven't taken the time to find out where this come from. Where did this come from and who served it? Who's bringing it to me and why? You just grab a fork and dove in. Oh, by the way, some of this is dog food. Now this one is just plain, nothing fancy, but it's healthy. It's clean, it's good, it didn't come out the garbage. But most of you would bypass this for the pretty one. Saints of God, beware. Be careful. Because your enemy, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Let me tell you, the devil cannot devour the truth. He cannot devour the truth. He will seek to devour. All he's looking for is, can I find a place where somebody has dropped their guard? Can I find a place where somebody is starting to question the word of God? Listen, it's just like Eve and the serpent. The devil said, half God said, what did he do? He introduced a question to make you start doubting, to make you start wondering. Wondering, uh, did God really mean this? Uh, did God really mean uh, for me to live holy? Uh, oh, no, he didn't really mean holy. Uh, he just meant sort of holy. He didn't mean live upright. He just meant do the best you can. No. God said, behold, I give you power. Now, you can't do it by yourself. Nobody in here can. But God said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means destroy you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Just open your mouth and say something. Oh, Oh, yeah. Oh, we, uh, we say it in the house of the Lord because it's comfortable and it's easy. When you're playing and he's uh, uh, drumming, thumbing, whatever, all of that makes it easy. But what about uh, on your job? What about uh, when people are acting goofy? What about your neighborhood? What about your school? What about this uh, family reunion you're going to? What about that? Can you still give God some glory in the midst of craziness? Everybody knows everybody's family is not all what's on TV. We all know that. Would you be willing to speak up for the truth? Would you be willing to be an evangelist for the truth? We're not talking about grabbing a mic. We're just talking about standing up. We're just talking about speaking up. We're talking about saying, this is not the will of God for us. You got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. Which one do you choose? It's your choice. God's truth or the devil's lie. Let me just warn you. If you choose the devil's lie even though right now the lie looks cute and fancy but down the road the lie turns into a dragon and he starts to eat at you nobody steps out listen I got alcoholics in my family my family are functioning some of them are functioning alcoholics they didn't grow up to say when I grow up I want to be an alcoholic that was not the intent but the devil knows where the weak places are. And when you're down in the dumps, somebody gives you something to lift you up. And when you get a lift, you remember that lift. Then you go back to it again. 
and you go back to it again. And you keep going until you are an alcoholic, until you lose your family, until you move from house to house 12 times in one year, until you can't find any peace, until three drinks is not enough until six cans of beer is not enough, uh, until you're just consuming and consuming, until you lose your job, uh, and then you lose your family, uh, and then you're on the street. Uh, I went to find one of my cousins, uh, and we drove him. He's in Bangor, Michigan. Uh, and I was just like, how are we going to find him? We don't know where he is. All we know is his name. We pulled to a gas station, and we said, do you know where Taurus Briscoe lives. They said, you mean Junebug? <laughs> He's the town drunk. You probably see him over here where we drove over there. He wasn't there. Well, he sleeps under the bridge. He's this, he's that. And my heart broke because here we are all living in a house. But these are choices that you start making early in life. And the devil never shows you the end result. He never does. If he did, everybody would run from him. He's got everything cloaked and wrapped real pretty to get your attention. And then he starts feeding you garbage. <laughs> so the scripture says, because they received not a love for the truth. I want you to check your hearts and say, God, do I love your truth enough to stand up for it? Do I love your truth enough? I don't mean, listen, some of you young people are in high school, probably, junior high. I don't mean you have to grab the mic at lunch and, and say, hey, hold up, I got something to say. I don't mean that. I just mean at your lunch table. Could you stand to bow your head and pray when everybody else is talking? It, it, it's not, he's not asking for your blood, sweat, and tears. He's just asking for you to stand for the truth. Where'd you do this weekend? Oh, I hung out. Where? Oh, somewhere. You're not going to say, I went to a women's retreat, and we had a wonderful time, and I got delivered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. No. He's not even asking you to do that. He's just saying, will you stand for the truth? Will you speak the truth when it is appropriate? You don't speak the truth in your classroom. Stand up. Teacher, I got something to say. I, I got inspired at church, and I got to say it. That's inappropriate. But there are times and ways that God is giving us an opportunity to stand for truth. Just stand for the truth. If you don't stand for the truth, you'll fall for a lie. You got two choices, stand for truth, fall for a lie. But the Bible says, because they receive not a love for the truth. I might not do it all the time, but I love it. I love it. I love it. God, I love you. God, I, I might mess up, but I love you. God, I praise you. I thank you. I, I, I need you. Lord, I trust you. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you saved me. I believe your blood washes. I believe your blood cleanses. I believe the truth lets me go from the devil. I believe all of that. The truth, a love for the truth. <laughs> a love for the truth you avoid. That strong delusion. And now when you listen to the news or TV programs, I mean, they just slip in delusion after they, they, they're trying. Listen, I was watching the, uh, the courthouse hearings on January 6th last year. Now, listen, everybody saw it, right? I mean, it was on television. We're watching them scale the walls. 
break into the building, knock over policemen, shoot and stuff. And they said, it wasn't me. <laughs> and, and what's weird is they, they go back over the tapes and say, well, maybe it wasn't. That's a strong delusion. You're daffier than Daffy Duck. Yeah, you were there. Here's the video. But, but people will try to convince you to believe a lie. So hold on to the word. Amen? Um, let's stand. Oh, thank you. I, I feel like, I hope you didn't feel like I beat you up or anything like that. I feel like there's also some, some uh, intercessors that have kind of gone to sleep. We need the intercessors to wake up. We need the intercessors to shake yourself because we need the intercessors to pray against some of this stuff that's going down. Some of it is just downright wicked. And you have a beautiful church, beautiful pastor and wife, lovely congregation. You can say, ooh, we're safe, we're good. <clears throat> Don't get comfortable like that. <sighs> I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is coming back. And I know that it says so in the scriptures that <clears throat> because he's delayed the coming, because it hasn't happened like they thought it was going to happen. I think I've been saved 63 years. Yep, I'm that old. And for 63 years, the same, the Lord is coming back. Don't, don't even worry about going to school. The Lord's coming back. Don't worry about getting married. The Lord's coming back. Don't, don't buy a house. The Lord is coming back. <clears throat> they took it a little over the top. But don't get it out of your head. The Lord is coming back. The Lord is coming back. <clears throat> and the Lord is coming back for a church. And the Lord is coming back uh, for his bride. And the Lord is looking. Listen, he's looking, wanting to add to the bride before he comes back. The only thing we don't know is when. But the Bible says that the lawless one has laid everything out. And you can see it now. It, everything, nothing is against the law. You can, you can do this, you can do that. It's, it's getting to a place where the righteous should be vexed in their soul. And when you get vexed in your soul, you fall on your knees. And you declare, God, enough is enough. God, don't let it come to this house. God, don't let it move. Come on. There's so many killings in Indianapolis. The intercessors, we need you to pray. You can stop some, listen, you can stop some shootings. I believe it. You can say, not in this neighborhood. No drugs in this neighborhood. Dry that one up. We were praying the other, a few weeks ago, and the Lord just began to pour down. We need fentanyl to be dried up. Don't get comfortable just because it's not in your house. It's killing people. I looked up the statistics, and did I say it was 60,000 people have died in a year? That's up with with uh, COVID. Come on. And God said, behold, I give you power. You can stop it. So we started praying, God, dry this thing up. Don't let it come into Muncie. Don't let it. 
let it be exposed. Let these trucks get stopped. Let the police find them. Turn their gangs on their ear so they can start getting mad at each other. When they start getting mad at each other, they won't be bothering us. But we need you to stop it. We can't do it. We don't have the strength. But I know a God who is more than able. So let the righteous cry and the Lord will hear them. I'm telling you, we started saying, God, stop this. We have people dying. They're wanting to bring what are those things? That mist that goes up their nose. Um, Narcan. In the churches. We met with the mayor and they said, can we bring Narcan to your church? Because the people who are dying will probably come to the church for help. And I know you're wondering, like, well, did you or not? But my thought is, we have a Narcan. And his name is Jesus. And I believe the righteous can cry. And the Lord will hear us. And so we started praying, God, dry it up. And that very next day, they arrested a truck that was coming into Muncie. Got stopped on the highway, full of, full of fentanyl. If you saw it on the news, they, they stopped a boat and they had fentanyl floating in the water. Yeah. Yeah. And they confiscated, I forgot, I don't know how much. It was a lot. Yeah. So keep praying because you're seeing the results of it. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't get comfortable and just say, mm, it's not me, it's not my son, it's not my daughter, it's not my nephew, it's not my grandchild. I'm good. No. The truth has to be declared. So as we stand today, first I want to make an altar call for anyone who is not walking with God and you know the truth. You know if you're walking with God or not. You're going to be saying, I don't know if I'm walking. If you have to say that, more than likely you need to come up. And if you want to change your life, just turn because walking with God is the best life ever perfect no but it's the best life ever if anyone wants to come and turn their life over to Jesus come anybody anybody you know when I told you Jesus is coming that is really true. Amen. We just don't know when. We don't know when he's coming, but we know he's coming. And that, that son of perdition, the devil, he's laying things out for the Antichrist to take over. And the spirit of the Antichrist is at work right now. The spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is an actual person, but that spirit of lawlessness is at work right now. So if you want to be safe away from that influence, you come. And if you feel like, hey, I'm saved, I got baptized and I got filled with the Holy yes. Ghost, but I'm drifting. You come. 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 If you are drifting, come. Come. That's beautiful, baby.
Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Hallelujah. 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 company of people that believe we're not standing out there by yourself
Stroke their back and say, You're gonna make it, baby. Amen. They need us to say, I, I, Listen, they look at some of us old ones and think that they've always been this super holy saint. You need to let them know I wasn't, I ain't. I need Jesus every minute because you know what? The devil hits old people like he hits young people, just with different stupid stuff. We need help. They need help. Come on. Don't let this girl stand here and feel like she's all alone. She's not by herself. We are standing with her. We're not going to let the devil have her. He can't have her. He cannot. And most of the battle is in your mind. It's a fight in your mind. Put your hand on If you're near a young person Just put your hand on them and tell them You're going to make it baby We're not going to let you fall We're not going to stand by And watch you dry up And turn into a withered tree We're going to pour water on you We're going to bless you I think you ought to put your hands together. Craig said, I want to be saved. Oh, you can do better than that. Pretend like we're at a Lakers game and LeBron James is come on.
safe here, you're safe here. Yes, I'm safe. You're safe here, you're safe here. Safe here, safe here. He is our 